Dear viewers, welcome to the one-on-one -on -one set. Our guest tonight is Shani Ramsami. She is 25 years old, a former laureate, but now also a singer, songwriter and composer. Shani, thank you so much for joining us in the studio of the NBC. Thank you so much for having me today, Koya. It's a pleasure to be here. Shani, like I have mentioned, you are a former laureate. You have studied architecture at the tertiary level, but you also have a strong passion for music. How did you actually develop this interest in music? I've always been very interested in music since I was very young. When I was maybe two or three, I was already singing. And then at the age of eight, I entered a competition called Timambo. Maybe you've heard it. And that's when I sang for the first time in front of a big audience. And that's when I felt the, the energy, the love of being on stage and performing. So I'd say this is when it really started for me. So music was initially your hobby, we can say. Yes. And you have also learned the piano during your childhood. As a child, what drew you to the art of music and to practice musical instruments? So after Timambo, that's when I decided I want to get more into music. And my parents kind of encouraged me to pursue um, classical piano. So I went to the music conservatory for four years, I think. I did classical piano there. But unfortunately, I wanted to sing. But with classical music, you're just playing. And it was long hours. So eventually, I switched to guitar, because then I could play and sing at the same time, and it was much easier. Was it actually difficult to practice those different musical instruments? For piano, I'd say yes, because I was doing classical piano and I had to learn these very complicated pieces. So when I switched to guitar, then it was more to accompany myself while singing, and I preferred that. It was easier. Shani, music is a language of emotion, we can say. It represents different types of feeling. As an artist, what does music symbolize to you? Well, as an artist, music is kind of everything to me because I grew up with it. When I'm sad, that's where I go. When I'm happy, that's also where I go. And if I really have something to say but I can't say it, then I write a song about it. So we can say that where words fail, music speaks. Exactly. Shani, was it actually easy for you to strike a balance between your studies and love for music? Because to be a laureate, it actually requires lots of sacrifice, lots of hard work. Share with us your journey a bit. So, like I said, I was taking lessons until the age of 15, maybe, because then the workload at school became so much bigger. So I had, to, I had to make a choice. I couldn't give that much time to music anymore. So I stopped the lessons, and I was just doing my covers on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. And I would use the reward system, which means I would work for, let's say, one hour and then take a 15-minute music break. And that would be my way to release all the stress and have a happy moment. But would you say that maybe music helped you to be, to be more focused in your studies also? Well, yes, definitely, because music develops a different part of your brain. And that helps you in your academics as well, which is something that some people don't often realize, that all these things... They work together for someone's development. Yes, I think it's, it also contributes to the personality of a person. Exactly. And music actually like, really lightens one's mood and reduces stress as well. Yes. Shani, there are so many different genres and types of music. Share with us those different genres that you practice. Um, for me, I would say it's mainly pop music. So everything that you hear on the radio that sounds very commercial, that's what I'm drawn to. And some artists think it's not the best genre because it's, it's pop music, everybody knows it, it's catchy. But that's what I like. And over the years, I've, I've told myself that it's okay. It's okay to like pop music. And I also like R&B. And then in terms of local music, I really enjoy Sege. Why have you chosen the style? Do you feel that it connects to the youngsters more? Um, it connects with me first. And since I'm a youngster, I guess it also connects with the people who are like me. But then it's also catchy, so I, I like it. And when you perform a song that everybody knows, you get that energy back from the crowd, and it's a different feeling. Yes. Shani, in 2019, you had launched a music video called Papa, and the song talked about the beautiful bond between a father and a daughter. 
I think undoubtedly your father is the main inspiration behind that song, but tell us more about it, about the concept of that song. So yes, the main inspiration is obviously my dad. If I can tell a bit of a backstory, what happened was I was in Cape Town and it was a few, maybe two days or one day before I fly back to Mauritius and I couldn't find my passport. Oh my God, <laughs> I know <laughs> that's scary. I, yeah, because I had already packed all my boxes to put them in storage because I can't bring back everything. And I couldn't find my passport and I was so scared to tell my dad because that's the one thing he always said, don't, don't lose this, this is important. And in that moment, I felt so disappointed. I called my mom and I said, please don't tell him. And then eventually I found the passport but he sent me a message and, and he said, um, it's okay if you make mistakes. You must know that whatever you've done, I'm always there to help you. you. should never be afraid to tell me anything. And in that moment, I felt very emotional and I, and I wrote this song. I think the song also showcased the beautiful friendship that a daughter and father can share as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, my, my dad and I, we have a very special bond. There are things that just the two of us understand. Yes. But we also, we also have a parent and daughter of relationship, course. which is also strict mm -hmm. and sometimes not very stable. But altogether, it, I would say it's a very beautiful relationship I have with him. And how was your experience while writing that song or even singing it? I mean, it must have been difficult, actually. Yes, when I was writing it, I was crying the yes, whole time. I can imagine <laughs> because when I was listening to that song, it was so emotional. Yeah, I was crying the whole time. And, but I thought I can't stop because if I stop, I'm going to lose the inspiration. So I was writing it and crying at the same time. But I think I wrote most of it in half an hour. Okay. Yeah, it was very yeah. quick. The inspiration hit me. And then when I came back to Mauritius, I knew that I wouldn't be able to sing it in front of him because I would cry. Mm -hmm. So I recorded it and then I made him listen to it. And I could see he was also, he didn't cry, but he, he got a bit emotional. And... Uh, I think that the lyrics also showcase the emotional attachment, and I think that's what made the lead listeners connect more to it. But besides that, what do you think made listeners shower their love and appreciation to that song? Well, I think it's a very relatable song because everyone has a father, and no matter how, how good we want to be with them, it's hard. There's always a, an age gap. The, the generations change. And even if you're very, if you have the coolest dad or the coolest mom, sometimes they still have to be a parent. And, and I think everyone can relate to the little struggles we have growing up. And how was their reaction when you actually sung that song in front of them? Um, so in, for my family, my siblings related because they sing it from my perspective. I think my mom got a little bit jealous <laughs> because she didn't you get have to sing for mama <laughs> exactly. now. <laughs> Maybe the next song. Um, and then just the general public, they thought it was very relatable. They would send me messages saying they were very touched by the song and they could feel the lyrics and, and they were thanking me for, for having written that song. And now, Shani, being a singer, songwriter or even composer is not so easy. What is your creative process while writing a song or even composing a piece of music? So it's different all the time. But I'd say most of the time it's when I'm feeling a very strong emotion. It can be a happy one or a sad one, frustrating one. And it's that emotion that um, sparks the creative juices. So then I will either sit down with my piano or my guitar and I will try to express what I'm feeling. And sometimes it's the melody that comes first and sometimes it's the lyrics. The best part is when both of them come together. You get the lyrics and the melody. And, and then I just develop it further. But do you actually come up with a theme first or is it like going with the flow mostly? Mostly going with the flow because it's not my full-time job. If it was my full-time job, then maybe every day I would wake up and say, okay, today you're writing a song about friendship. Tomorrow you're writing a song about freedom. But because I don't have that time, um, it's mainly whenever I feel something or I'm inspired, then I write about it. It's not planned. I was actually coming to that. Have it ever occurred to you to actually make music your career? Yes. Right after, actually, while I was studying, I really wanted to drop out <laughs> and do music full time because that's when I wrote my first song. 
and it was an English song about love and I, I sent it to a few people and they were like, this is really good. So I, sa- I thought to myself, maybe I should quit architecture and do music, but I didn't do that. I continued and then upon coming back to Mauritius, I thought, okay, let's try to do music full time. But as you know, with COVID, it was yes, not easy. So. Yes, and now Shani, what do you like to do actually outside of music that contributes to your musicality? Any hobby you turn to that actually help you to be more creative? Um, I've always been a very creative person, so I've always enjoyed everything from um, DIY projects, um, painting, card making, bracelet making, um, video editing, everything that's creative I like to touch. And I think that all of that contribute to my musicality somehow. Since you are, you've studied architecture, I assume that you have good drawing skills, right? Yes, I did do drawing up until A level at, um, at school. And even in uni, you were required to draw. In the, when you sign up, they tell you, no, drawing is just a small aspect, but they lie, they lie. <laughs> you need to be a good drawer and you need to draw quickly as well. But do you feel that maybe drawing as well helps you to be creative and helps you to create music at times? Like it's a way to express yourself. Yes, because um, drawing is a creative outlet. So sometimes while I'm writing songs, I'm also picturing the music video and I'm making little sketches on my, on my notebook or something. So it all works together. Shani, the relationship between music and other forms of art, for instance, video, has become increasingly important. How do you see this relationship yourself and in how far do you feel does music relate to other senses other than hearing alone? Well, like you said, music videos are becoming increasingly important Mm -hmm. and over the years the skills of videographers have Um, improved and special effects and different settings so it helps because people are not just listening nowadays it you need more than that to capture someone's attention so having a really nice music video can help bring your your music to another level it connects in a better way because what we see we believe sometimes and i think that it really helps to connect more it's really about storytelling so sometimes you're telling a story in your song but when you add the image to it, just like for my papa video, then it becomes stronger because it's not just appealing to your ears, but also to your eyes and eventually your heart, your, your brain. So yes, merging the two really helps. And you have actually done a music video, which is called Nuzenis. It is a music video that mainly points out the different talents and artistic skills that youngsters possess. What was the main inspiration behind that song? So I was just looking around at my friends, at everyone I know, especially now on on social media, everybody's sharing their projects, what they're doing. And I was thinking to myself, these youngsters really have talent and everybody's pushing really hard and is trying from scratch without having a support. And I was inspired by them actually. And I thought it would be nice to, to write a song that shows that aspect of the youth because sometimes you think oh the youth is immature they don't have experience what do they know but actually they're doing really well and i wanted to put put it out there Et 
nowadays are always trying to be the better version of themselves. Mm -hmm. It's always in ever evolving process I would say. Yeah I think youngsters don't think too much which is a good thing mm -hmm. because I think the the older you get the more conscious you are of all the reasons why you can fail at something but youngsters they just go for it they're like I'm young I can do it if it fails I'll try something else. Exactly yeah and I, I see that most youngsters now they are not afraid to take risk. It's all about following what they want to do, their passion and being successful in that as well. Yes, definitely. They, they see it as an opportunity. Shani, how was that process? Because to create a music video is not so easy. You have to come up with stories, characters, location. Share with us the process uh, to create that music video. So it was a, a lot of fun for me because like I said, I love video editing, video production. So I, the, the hard part was coordinating. So coming up with a list, um, contacting the people, explaining the project, asking if they would be on board, find a time, and then actually meet them, shoot, and then do the editing, color grading, all of that. But it was a lot of fun. I wouldn't say it was, it was hard, but it was time consuming. New Zen S1, it was partly shot in Cape Town and partly shot in Mauritius and I would say about a whole month to because I was also studying I yes. had exams and everything oh my god that was having stressful exactly but I really wanted to do it so I found ways to do it during weekends or after classes and then in Mauritius it was a bit easier because I was on holidays mm -hmm. so then I merged the two together you are actually the one who directed the music yes. video right do you actually learn to camera or I don't know how was it no to? formal training from my side but I've I've been doing it since I'm 15 um, doing music videos and over the, the years I've learned small techniques for example a storyboard is very important and planning ev like every second what's going to happen in the video helps because sometimes when you're editing you realize oops I'm missing footage mm -hmm. and if you've done a really good plan and if there's a focus on the storyline then it becomes easier. Exactly Shani and I think that becoming a musician, a music artist means much more than just singing or learning to play an instrument. There are a variety of skills involved in learning to become a capable and versatile artist. What are those interpersonal skills that may help someone in building a career in the music industry according to you? So obviously there's the technical part, but then the soft skills, I would say being humble, because if you're arrogant, people won't want to work with you. Uh, you have to be patient, because in this field, everyone is busy. Very few people are doing it full time, so they have to find time to help you. And I would say being kind, because if you're in the music industry, you're dealing with other songwriters, other musicians, producers, and everyone is creative. So what they have done is very important to them. They've put their heart and soul in it. So the way you give your opinion, the way you say if you like or don't like something is very important because you don't want to ruin your relationship with these other creative people. Yes, and Shani, you have actually also written two English songs. Yes. And what actually drew you to write English songs now? I mean, you were writing songs in Creole before, but now you've turned to English. And the themes as well are different. It's about heartbreak, love. Tell us about it. So actually, I started writing in English first. My first song ever was in English. It was a heartbreak song. And then later on, I did in Creole. So I've always started with English. And I released two English songs on my YouTube channel but I write English songs all the time. I've written maybe 20 English songs, but it's still kept to myself for now. Um, I think it's because of what I listen to. I listen to English songs all the time, and it's mainly about love and heartbreak. So it becomes natural for me to also express myself in a similar way. Has it ever occurred to you that you have a creative block while you're writing? Oh yes, all the time, all the time. I don't think there's ever been a song that I wrote without having a block. Even the really? Papa song, I, I wrote most of it in half an hour. And then when I was in studio, I was like, okay, I don't have a bridge for this song. I need to come up with it now. But yeah, I have writer's block all the time, but it's about pushing and 
forcing yourself sometimes to get it through. And we've been in lockdown recently this year. Have you actually tried to, to write new songs or then sing a new one? I've tried, but I'm the kind of person who's more inspired when I'm busy. When okay. I'm running from here pressure to there. Pressure makes you productive. Exactly. I've always worked really well under pressure. And during lockdown, I find that I become super lazy. I don't have the creativity to write There's songs. There's no routine. Experience. Exactly. I, f I feel like just sleeping or doing It's silly things. It was a hard time, actually. Yeah, it was too long as well. <laughs> Shani, I believe your road to success was not only smooth, you have had ups and downs. What are the difficulties that you had encountered and how did you overcome those challenges? So for music, it was really hard when, when I decided to produce music because before I was just doing covers and the struggles were simple. I was just getting some hate comments here and there and I didn't care. I've been doing it since so long that after a while I just see them and I, I smile, I say, okay, whatever. But then when I started producing my own songs, firstly, I started doubting myself a lot because now I'm putting out my own words, my own melodies, and I don't know how people will feel. So that was a, a, a bit strange at first. And then finding a producer, because no one in my family has done that before. Mm -hmm. My friends don't do this either. So I had to knock on many doors before I finally found people to work with. Sometimes I've worked with people I wasn't too happy, so I had to find other ways. But I'd say producing was a very hard part. How do you deal with criticism? Because it's something that not all youngsters can, can handle. Um, I would say that I don't think about it too much. I've seen so many hate comments from the time I started when I was only 15 up to now I'm 25, so that's 10 years. So after 10 years of seeing the same similar comments, you, you kind of become immune to it, I'd say. Especially, I make the distinction between a comment that's just mean to bring you down and a comment that's constructive. constructive. So if it's constructive, I'll, I'll pay attention, I'll, I'll reflect on it, but I never answer. I never yes. answer anyone. It's always about focusing on yourself exactly. and on your skills. Shani, what are your ambitions now as a songwriter, singer, or even a composer? So it has been my dream for the last two years to release my own album. I am working on a few songs at the moment, but I haven't found my, my sound because every artist sounds different and unique and I'm still looking for that uniqueness and the dream is to ultimately have my own album. And any advice that you would like to give to our youngsters to encourage them to follow their passion and give wings to their dreams like you have done? Yes, of course. I'd say to youngsters out there that if they're passionate about something, to follow it, whatever it is, it can be um, cooking, it can be fashion, whatever it is, they have to do it because at the end of the day, they only have one life and you don't want to look back and think, what if? You'd rather say, oops, than what if. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Shani, before we let you go, please sing a few lines for us. Okay, I'll sing uh, Nuzenes because I think anyone listening to that song can relate and can feel empowered. Yes. Nous aînés à la fosse, nous aînés sans copli, faut faire zot confiance, de zot la sens, exprime zot sentiment. Nous aînés peine à nous aînés pour faire nous fiers, de zot la clé, faire zot rentrer avec un nouveau pensée. Thank you so much, Shani. It was so beautiful, and I'm sure most youngsters have now been motivated to even do better now in their life. Thank you so much, Koyal, for having me and for this wonderful interview. It was a pleasure, Shani. Dear viewers, we have now come to the end of this episode. Thank you so much for your time. We hope to catch you next week at the same time, same channel. Have a great evening. Dis-moi avec l'amour, donne-moi tout ce qui m'aime. Donne trappe me la fais-moi arriver, donne apprends-moi.
tu sais qui me connaît Souvent nous partis d'accord Pas connaît qui s'en a en nos générations 